All right, what's going on guys? I'm John Glasscock. Welcome to another video and you already know what it is. Another year, another Call of Duty. So today I'm going to give you all some of my tips to get the best connection in Modern Warfare. And I do want to mention I will be referencing a lot of my previous videos because on this channel I have made so many videos that cover just about every aspect of network optimization for gaming. So check the video description for everything that I will be talking about today. And lastly, these are all tips that I personally use myself, so if you want to know what I do, this is the video that you want to watch. Alright, so first off, ping is king, and upload and download speeds are important, don't get me wrong, but if you want a less lag and a better gameplay experience, then you want low ping to the server you're playing on. Now, unfortunately, where you live and how close you are to the host are not always in your control. But there are certain things that you can do on your end to improve your overall experience. So number one, obviously you want to play on a wired connection and make sure that crossplay is enabled in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And the reason being is crossplay will allow you to connect to more players, which increases your chances of landing a lobby with a low ping. So if you haven't already, make sure to check this setting in your options menu and ensure you have crossplay enabled. Next is going to be Open NAT, and I'll have a video in the description box that goes over just about every way that you can get Open NAT type on console, and you can check it out for yourself. But again, Open NAT maximizes the amount of players you can connect to, which does improve matchmaking. Now, the thing with Open NAT is it can be kind of tricky, especially with certain setups or internet providers. So if you're stuck on a moderate NAT type, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's not the end of the world or anything. And it's really highly unlikely that being on a moderate NAT type is going to increase your ping or latency. But if you are struggling and you can't seem to get an open NAT type or you're stuck on moderate, a lot of times just putting your PS4 or Xbox in the DMZ on your router fixes this issue. And no, this is not the most ideal setup in my opinion, but it can be used as a last resort if nothing seems to work. Okay, so next is going to be port forwarding, and this kind of ties to open NAT and everything I just talked about. But if you're wondering what I do for port forwarding, I just leave UPnP enabled on my router, and that's it. However, if you are going to manually port forward, then you're going to want to disable UPnP if you decide to. And I have made a pretty decent guide on how to port forward for gaming, so check it out in the video description below if you want to use manual port forwarding. So as far as which one is best, generally UPnP works great for basic home networks, but there really is no right or wrong answer. It really just depends on your setup and what your situation is. But this is a big one coming up, and that is QoS, or quality of service. I use QoS exclusively for my home network, but you'll want to get yourself a router that has good QoS because it does make a huge difference, especially if you have a limited bandwidth or just a lot of people using your internet connection. And the router that I recommend that I've been using for quite a while now is the Netgear XR500. It has incredible QoS. And that's not the only reason I use it, but I recommend picking one up if you can for yourself and you can afford it. I will have an Amazon affiliate link in the description box below if you're interested. But using the Netgear XR routers also gives you more control over your matchmaking with the GeoFilter, which is a feature that I use consistently every time I play Call of Duty. And it keeps my ping consistently below 30 and sometimes 10 milliseconds or less. And that's because I'm no longer matchmaking to the East and West Coast servers, so it gives me a lower ping. Now, if you're on cable internet, I recommend looking into a Doxus 3.1 modem if you have cable internet. And if you're okay with spending the extra money, it really is a good investment because the 3.1 modems handle latency sensitive traffic much better than the previous generation 3.0 modems. Um, that is because of active queue management. But again, the Netgear ones are my choice. I like the CM1000, Doxus 3.1, and the Aeris surfboards are also really good too. So yeah, other than that, make sure that IPv6 is enabled on your router, especially if you play on Xbox One or PC. I don't think that the PS4 natively supports IPv6, but it's best to just leave it enabled if you can. And lastly, do not waste your time changing MTU or DNS settings on either your router or your console. And I have made countless videos showing that this does not improve latency in game, rather which DNS you use or what MTU setting that you change. DNS can have 
a impact on download speeds from what I've seen and in my experience, but aside from that, you won't see any performance improvements in game or lower latency. But if you are adamant about experimenting with MTU settings, I will have a link in the video description where you can check out a guide that I made a while back on changing MTU settings for PS4. Whew, so I think that about wraps it up. That's pretty much everything that I can think of on how to improve your connection and get the overall best connection for Call of Duty Modern Warfare on PS4 and Xbox One and PC. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have any questions, comment below to tell me what you think. And also subscribe if you're new to the channel. Leave a thumbs up on the video and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.